today I'm going to talk about the seven myths of data-driven design. Okay, so my name is Sujin. <laughs> so I came from South Korea, but living in Singapore. So I'm a web developer. Uh, I mostly touch the front end. So I'm working in uh, Straight Times, is a uh, Singapore national English newspaper. So in this team, I mostly mostly I work on the data visualization and data analysis. And uh, for my the my interest, I also work as a open source uh, committer in the Babel JS, which is JavaScript compiler. And also, I love to translation because Korean is my mother tongue, so I um, translate uh, many open source books. Okay, so I like open source, and I like data, and I like uh, data visualization. So before starting my talk, I want to give some overview of the data visualization. Um, so what is a data visualization? Data visualization is that provide context for user and transform the data into information. So it tells a story, or so it helps and read readers to make a decision. So one make sure that be, we have to do uh, be objective. What kind of no matter what kind of the data types were represented on uh, edited or quantitative or massive and no context. So, uh, so I'm going to show uh, some my visualization work in my working place. The first one is a Singapore street visualization with the open data. Actually, it was kind of the massive product project that I had had. So I, um, accumulate the whole the chunk of the data set, I mean the Singapore streets names, and also using um, the Python, and also I pass the uh, GeoJSON data from using the openstreets.com. And also I used uh, Google, uh, Google Street uh, View Portals, and the link with the uh, streets and the Geo, GeoJSON coordinate. So if you go to this link and you can check inside. So another the project is the Singapore National Day Song Project. So actually, my background is music. <laughs> I <laughs> so I still I love the theme. So we wanted to explore uh, Singapore National Day songs because every year the Singapore government make a new song to um, the, the make the good move for the nations. So we um, file the series of the songs and the analysis, the lyrics and sounds and user emotions. So also um, in the sound part, also I use the Spotify API and they extract the some features and the analysis and visualize. And the last one is the Singapore International Marriage. So my age is or uh, um, not much, <laughs> but my parents has uh, a lot of concern about marriage, so marriage is another in my interest. So I um, wanted to explore uh, how Singaporeans um, um, the date with like the ethnic groups. So you, I also um, use the data gov, which is the public the data, and uh, make those kind of the data visualization, and I won the second prize. So. Um, I, I think that I have had a lot of the experience on the data visualization. So I follow, mostly I follow this uh, design process. The first thing, thing is that uh, I define the task or the problem or what I have to do and then researching. So what kind of data I can use in this theme and analyze. So this is the most important part. So if the data is not clean and I have to do a cleanup or or um, the cut up and whatever and data mining and the organizing step. Um, the after that we are figure out that how can we make them good the d data visualization. So we br brainstorm visual queries or the models or explore uh, the previous the project and whatever and then visual we made the visualizing and the prototyping and then evaluating. So actually it's not the easy job. I mean, every step is very messy. So even though it looks like the hierarchy and it follows very logically, but it doesn't. 
So, but on the other hand, I feel a lot of the frustration because even though I put a lot of the effort in the data visualization, but page view has been declined. So the, um, the um, one of the project, okay, so for example, um, Singapore, the national song, it has only the 15,000 view per a week, so which is very low. Bec so I couldn't know that because we made really the good um, data visualizations and the storyline, but the page view was not good. So main, the, so I wanted to, wa I need to, I wanted to, what, what is really reason? Um, I cannot uh, open up our <laughs> company, the data, but I will tell you a little bit. So I um, check it up, the Google Analytics and all the metrics that we use. So I found that because um, like the Singapore, um, the national thing is, um, it might be only the understandable for the nations, but the uh, global, the audiences, they don't know what is the meaning. So that was the one problem. And uh, based on our statistics, um, most of the page view, um, uh, they only spend the time uh, less than six, 10 seconds, it, which means that after six, 10 seconds, no one read the, all the, um, the graphics or the text inside of there. So, we, so it means that we have to catch the audience's eyes and we don't let the audience uh, readers to go out to somewhere. So we are really try to uh, keep our audiences on the first from the bottom. So for example, um, this project is uh, um, school bus fees, uh, which explore the old uh, schools in, in Singapore and how much um, they pay the pay for uh, school bus fees. So actually, there are so many tags until the bottom, but we cut off and um, we put uh, the main graphic into the first page. So that's why we cut off. There is no tags inside of here. We put the less and let the users to explore in the this region and figure out, okay, my son, let's explore how, how, how th this school um, uh, had those kind of the fees. Yeah, so we wanted to compare. So yeah, Singapore uh, National uh, Songs Project also same, we also use the same methodology. So um, we put the main key, uh, the graphic in the, as a main key visual. So we changed the older strategy. So after some time, we figure out that, okay, um, the based on the data, we have made decision that um, we should, we should the key, keep the, key, um, the main graphic in, the, in the, the first page, not the bottom page. So sometimes we also change our the storylines and data visualizations works, and we also fix um, the whole, whole the structure as well. So why data-driven design we, we need? It's a um, evidence-based uh, uh, experience design. So it, which means that whenever you design something and you have to prove and you have to uh, show your um, assertion or your reasonings. So it's a clear-headed approach to building a better customer experience that sits at the intersection of the da data and design. So it's a very important. So uh, the basic, uh, the principle of data driven design uh, follows the three steps. The discover, improve, and validate. The discover is that, okay, discover patterns and the trends, what's working and not working, and digging into the problem and how to solve them. And second one is that, okay, improve. Improve on existing approach or the idea, iterate on the different versions or uh, experiment with incremental change over the time. So you have to improve and improve based on your feedback. And the second stage is the validate. Uh, validate. So validate a uh, change and new direction or decision and confirm the issues and probe unsuccessful or successful approach. So, but on the other hand, Okay, so let's do, when I suggest that, okay, let's to make decision based on the data and let's improve our design. Yeah, based only the based on design. But what I have 
uh, feel that everyone have different thinking about the data and data-driven design. So, <laughs> so I also li felt a little bit uh, uh, frustrated because there is only very little agreement. So I, I found uh, this one article. So uh, based on the, this article, I, um, uh, I wanted to share the, uh, the seven myths of the data-driven design. The first myth is that data is not my responsibility. So I wonder how many uh, data-related people are here sitting here. Okay, only few. <laughs> so I'm working in newsroom, but sometimes journalists complain that I cannot read the data. So it's a very, how can I say, it's a very um, problematic I and I also is a kind of very uh, challengeable because um, if the contents is look like the more uh, scientific and everyone is afraid of uh, looking inside the data, but actually it was is it not true? But it makes uh, the people not uh, deep inside to the data. So. Um, so sometimes, not, not everyone, <laughs> but uh, sometimes they complain that I want to just uh, stick on the story, not the data part. So you have to analyze this at the first and then deliver the result. But it's not true. So no matter what you have, I mean, your lore, you, know, you have to look the data together. So don't need to be afraid of. I believe that um, if you uh, if you, you are already the expert in certain part of the field, so it, which means that you may have have more expertise better than the developer or the data scientist. So if you are a marketer, maybe you have uh, the not the better knowledge more than the developer, and you might be the negotiator much more better. So I believe that data is not just for like data scientists or the developers. The second myth is that data is just a number. Actually, which is true, a bit true, but it's not really, because they, sometimes data can be zero or undefined or null, or it not be the zero or one, two, three, four, those kind of things. Sometimes data cannot be um, uh, translated into the numbers. So actually, uh, the data can be sort um, categorized into the two types, uh, quantitative and qualitative. So uh, if you are UX researchers, maybe you know that the qual qualitative, right? So some data set has a number, and then it shows that who, what, when, where. But on the other end, the some data it doesn't have. It's just a demo rate, uh, your feeling and user's feeling, or the why or how, like, oh, I like this color. Yeah, those kind of, I, I prefer to use the blue. And it, it is not changed into the zero on one kind of that. Yeah. So third myth is that the data is the objective truth. No, <laughs> no, no, it's not. So um, when you use the open source or open data set, there are so many features. So if you wanted to cover convert into the uh, types of like um, the chart or the data visualization, you have to pick some qualities or the features, which means that um, whatever you make, your decision and your like text will be uh, influenced. So this is not true. So so for example, I published the, um, the one data uh, visualization project, Singapore uh, Plastic the Problem. Uh, actually, it shows that how many uh, bottles uh, can be assumed per day. So let's say, so we actually, uh, we set the standard the bottle size as a 23 centimeter. But if you uh, use like two times more um, the scale, the bottle size, it might be the data can be changed, right? So it really depends on your subjective. So myth four, just stick to the best practices. So <laughs> sometimes some designers just follow what they had have before. So it sounds a little bit boring. So we need still need the inspiration and new design. So even though 
there are already so many damn good the examples, but we are we always need the new things. So this is this this is why we need uh, the data and plus the visualization the work. Uh, the myth five: bigger is always better. Okay, if data is bigger, yeah, it might be okay to analyze this, but if you are measuring something very subjective, like emotional, the responses based on like self-reporting rating or responses, re yeah, in this case, more responses give you a greater confidence level in the results. Not like you, you can say that okay, I get um, more the good feedback, and it might it makes me more feel better, kind of that, yeah. So um, it really depends on how what kind of data you use or what kind of um, um, your goal it is. So it's very subjective or so. The mystic is that data kills innovation and creativity. Actually, data is not a problem itself. So, <laughs> so when we strengths on the data, 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 data all the time, and some designers or the marketers might be frustrated and complain about that, and how can we reveal our will or our expertise or our taste? But it's not true. So what we have to make sure that they, using the data, we can improve more better user experiences and the product. And actually, this problem is uh, that is more related to how we uh, use uh, data. Yeah, kind of. The, is it more like kind of the usage? Okay, the last one. Last one is that uh, there is a right way to use data to inform the design. No, <laughs> actually, it cannot be. Uh, we cannot the set the single the methodology or the process or the unique approach to work with the data. So, oh sorry, oh I didn't. Oh, this slide doesn't have. So, um, let's for example, I obtain uh, some data set from the Open da Data Government's website, and so. So we have to figure out um, um, what's the real, uh, what is the f the our the findings, and we may we set up hypo hypothesis, and we just uh, figure out in um, the how ca the what data means and the what it tells a certain kind of the story, and then in the data visualization steps, we we cannot uh, fix right on just uh, using like simple the chart. Let's, for example, um, if I pick the, the bar chart, horizontal chart, but somehow it, not, it, it is not the suitable the kind of the chart in uh, particular the data type. In this case, we can use, um, the not using the horizontal, we can make the vertical the chart. Or it does not suitable and we can use the line chart. So we make the couple of the, a lot of the data visualization type and they compare and the which one is more readable and more suitable and more um, good way to represent the data type. So um, it cannot be like just a say um, as a simple logic. Oh. Okay. So uh, from the starting to the <laughs> end, we explore uh, the seven myth. So let's sum up. Okay, first thing, data is not my responsibility, which is not true. Everyone should take responsibilities. The second two is data is just a number. No, it can be anything. Okay, it can be a word or your well, exp explanations and even the data can be the zero or null or undefined. Third one is that data is the objective truth. No, it's very subjective. So it depends on your uh, thinking and your reasoning. Okay, four, just stick to the best practices. It make you boring, okay? We need the savvy and damn good and new type of the data visualization or 
like the product all the time. Five, bigger is always better. No, it depends on how, what kind of data you obtain or use. Sometimes, even though it's very um, small, the data, but however, it might be more valuable. Six, okay, data kills innovation and creativity. No, <laughs> it doesn't kill your creativity. You have to use the data to make better the product and the user experiences. So last one, there is a right way to use the data uh, to inform the design, which is no. So you have to explore the various type of the chart and then compare and then evaluate and then found on find out that which data, um, which de uh, design is more better and more um, um, more better to um, the for the user experiences. Okay, so uh, so this is uh, advice for data driven design. Um, so, so I will explain it a little bit. So user, the, the first thing is that user data from a variety of the source to inform you the design. Yeah, this is very important. And include the numbers and provide the context in your design. Okay, third one, use the data track changes over the time, explore new patterns and dig deeper on your problem. And this, Decide on meaningful categories and metrics that help your team tell a story about customer experiences. And um, develop a way to share and discuss data in your organization and start by defining the basics together with your team and your pe uh, peers. So actually using data-driven um, design in your working place might be very challengeable and some people really don't like, but <laughs> we have to open up and we have to discussion based on the data and um, make more, make sh um, convince them, okay, we are using this methodology to better our product. I believe that um, using this methodology and the advice might be um, you happier to uh, see when you design the product and, and the pro prototype. Okay, um, do you have any questions? Okay, you. question please. How do you choose the topic that you want, uh, let your company, uh, let your company do the, uh, they, ha they have visualization mm. uh, topics. How do you choose the topic? Uh, for example, like the marriage or like the bus, uh. how do you choose the topic that will make audience feel interesting? Okay, um, in terms of the topics, um, there are actually two types. The first thing is that immigrant topic is something like, uh, um, uh, like the, uh, for now the election is a elections, um, GE will be coming up. So it's a kind of the urgent and uh, season the topic, like kind of the Olympic and we have to do rush into the, the project. And on the other hand, the economic or like lifestyle, those kind of topics can is not the seasonal, right? So whenever we can publish, so those kind of uh, the pro projects and um, it really depends on our our like will kind of that. So for example, the music topic, I really love the music, so I suggest the topic. So it convert into the product project actually, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Sujin. Okay. So if you have any question and feel free to uh, come to me and let's keep in touch. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you for for sharing. Thank you.